along the lines of Emily's question. Um, what can you do when linguistics is not even like part of the conversation? Like if you are, for example, in a conference that's not about linguistics, mm -hmm. or or like um, right now I'm taking a social media class in the business school, mm -hmm. and they talked a lot about like other areas that could help in terms of like marketing your business and on social media. They talked about journalism, PR, uh, others, but linguistics was not part of the, the lecture, of the four-hour lecture history. And it was, I don't, like, I didn't know, like, how to, like, s how to bring that up and say, like, hello, there's, like, linguistics, and it's a very, like, important part of what you're doing. And they talked about pronouns, they talked about framing, but in a different way, but yeah. they never talked about linguistics. Yeah, it's, it's rough, because people still don't know what linguistics is, and right. they don't know that it's a thing. I mean, you can't interrupt a four-hour lecture the same way, but in in-person conversations, you know, you can kind of practice the, so who are you, what are you to, what are you interested in? I mean, I find, like, there's a certain kind of linguist gonna ling tendency that linguists have, where someone just says something interesting, and you're like, oh, your vowels, they're so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you use this word, can you say that again? Um, <laughs> You know, and a particularly knowledge of like dialect areas is often a good way to start with people if you can be like, oh, are you from X? Because I think you're using this particular vowel or something. Um, so sometimes like bringing it up in regular conversation is is a thing that that you can do uh, hopefully in an interesting rather than annoying way. But like, you know, I think we're all sometimes that person who gets distracted by by language, um, and he brings that kind of thing. The other thing, from kind of a like job market perspective, you can use the fact that most people don't know what linguistics is kind of for you in a job market because you can explain linguistics to be what you do um, because they don't know any different. <laughs> as long as like it's accurate what you do and you're not claiming that you know how to do X and you don't know how to do X. If you're like, I'm a linguist, and you're like, so what does that mean? And you explain what you do. Those are that's a, that's a that's a truth that is a truth in a job interview. Um, even if you happen to have this particular skill and you didn't actually learn it in a linguistics class, but the language-related skill that you have and you are also a linguist, then when they're asking you in a job interview, so what do you as a linguist bring to us? You can say this skill even if you happen to have it from a different class. You know, like I had public speaking skills not from being a linguist, but from just like you know doing competitive debate in undergrad and all these things. But I can say I'm a linguist and I'm good at public speaking, and you get the implicature that it's because I'm a linguist that I'm good at public speaking, and that's just really false because there are many linguists that are terrible public speakers. Um, <laughs> there are many academics that are terrible public speakers. It's like a it's an it's an endemic thing. But you can, you know, this is you know this is the, this is the kind of this isn't a thing you do on an academic CV because an academic CV is very very rigidly stated. But on a on a resume or a job application where what really matters is can you do it and can you show that you can do it? And less, like, does this particular credential prove the same thing that it's supposed to? Sometimes you could use people's ignorance about what linguistics is to your advantage um, by defining yourself to be what they need. They just didn't realize it was called linguist for their purposes. Um, 